And joining us from Beijing is our current affairs commentator, Victor Gao. Victor, a very busy Saturday at the two sessions. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. China's Supreme Court is expected to file a work report on legislative reforms. What can we expect? I would say uh, the uh, Chinese Supreme People's Court is a very important piece uh, in the overall edifice of China's effort towards building a rule of law country in China. And I would say over the past several uh, years, especially during 2015, the court system in China is very much flooded with many cases, partially because in China, in the traditional way, many people actually avoided the court system. They wanted to go to the government or the party headquarters directly to petition and to raise their complaints. But I think uh, one major focus of reform in China, of the judiciary system, is to encourage more and more people to go to the court, to resort to judiciary process, to resolve whatever conflicts or disputes or legal cases that they may have. This actually will create greater equity in China. The court system is not perfect in China. There have been many cases of corruption, including both in the procedural uh, sense of the word, as well as in case of the uh, corruption of the judges. And I would say uh, this problem still remains today, and the report uh, by the president of the Supreme People's Court would also need to address this concern of lack of transparency and, uh, in some cases at least, failure of the judiciary system, violation of due process, etc. So all these things uh, will need to be addressed on one side, the great achievements and the great overload and the efficiency that need to be improved. But on the other cases, on the other hand, the great problems, the corruption and how uh, China need to uh, resolve to deal with these corruption in the judiciary system. You mentioned corruption. China's been determined to crack down on corruption. There was Operation Fox Hunt. Tell me about the progress that has been made. I would say uh, over the past three years, uh, the Chinese government, headed by President Xi Jinping, aided very much by the head of the anti-corruption uh, bureau, uh, Mr. Wang Qishan, uh, has been very much focused on uh, anti-corruption. And I think the logic is very simple. Uh, mainly because corruption in China is not only individual. Uh, in many cases, it's kind of being institutionalized, and uh, corruption is very much embedded in the system. If China fails to weed out corruption, both on individual cases, but also, more importantly, in an institutional manner, then China's political system may fail, and the China that we understand today will no longer exist. We call it, in you know, the part possible collapse of the ruling party as well as the state. This means anti-corruption really has a direct bearing on the life or death of China, and no effort should be spared in this regard, in fighting against corruption. Some people may say that corruption may create some uh, collateral damages, for example, uh, slowing down of the Chinese economy. And I would say that Mr. Wang Qishai, in one of the speeches he made uh, just a few days ago, uh, was correct when he mentioned that corruption actually is the poison of the political life and will undermine the whole political system in China. Thank this you, means Victor. that anti-corruption in China will be institutionalized for the long term. Thank you so much, Victor Gao.